Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Last time, we went all around the world of Hyrule as we have explored it thus far, and we took care of all 18 shared fusions and knocked them all out. Well and good. And this time, before we head out to progress our adventure, I want to amend something. Turns out I missed this guy the last time we were here in episode 7. I want to fuse kinstones with this guy. I'm pretty sure this fusion unlocks after... Are you kidding me? As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by Murphy's Law, I believe this kinstone fusion unlocks after you complete the second dungeon. I just happened to miss it last time we were here. So anyway, let's do this fusion. And what will it spawn? Ooh. It will spawn... A golden tektite. Feel free to go kill that at your leisure. I'm not going to be doing it quite yet, though. For now, I actually want to head back to Hyrule Town for what I want to do next. Right here in the shop, you might have noticed that there is actually an item over here, and we actually can now afford this. This is an optional item. It is the boomerang. It costs 300 rupees. So we're going to buy this. You definitely want to buy this as soon as possible because the item that replaces it on the shelf, while very expensive, is very much worth your time. So later on, when we have a lot of money, we are going to be grabbing that as well. And finally, in this house right here, we have the stranger, who we are going to want to fuse with. I'm pretty sure, yes. We want to fuse with the stranger, and you definitely want to do this as soon as possible, anyone who's playing along. It will create this portal here in South Hyrule Field. You need to make sure to do this as soon as possible, otherwise you're going to miss out on a very good item. So we're going to be heading down to that portal and going right on through it. Down here in South Hyrule Field, you want to head right through the portal, and it will bring you to this house who seems to have absolutely no trouble if you just come in and take all of their treasure, so we're going to do that. But there is something we're going to do here that makes the treasure seem like a worthwhile compensation for the moment. There's this guy right here. Goodness, we rarely get visitors here. Tell me, how did you get here? If you ever enter this house through the front door from the area that this house is in, I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a spoiler, but if you enter this house by a means other than that portal, it will basically screw you out of the item we are about to get. Alright, we got a keystone piece right here. Not item we're about to get, we're going to get the item later, but you have to do this now. You see there's this old man right here, and there is a rupee wraith from Four Swords here. Although it seems to be doing much more to this guy than stealing his rupees. What you want to do is pull out your gust jar, and you need to follow this rupee wraith as it orbits this guy's head. And, eventually, it will be sucked into your gust jar, and you will cure the old man. Well, well, well. Look at how the color has come back to his face. How can I ever thank you? I still have a hard time believing he'd been possessed by a monster, though. What? An evil spirit had taken hold of me, and you drove it away. You... you might be right. I can already feel my energy returning. I'll be able to get out of bed soon. What's your name? Link? Thank you, my boy. You saved me. And he'll give you a hundred mysterious shells right away for your troubles. But you are going to be getting a good item much later. If you do not come and save the old man named Gregel, by the way, you are going to miss out on something very nice, so be sure you do that as soon as you possibly can. But anyway, heading back through the portal, I think we are all set to continue our adventure. Out here in the Trilby Highlands, you want to finally head south that one screen, like I told you not to do before. As soon as you do... Eh? What a strange feeling. I sensed something from the castle's direction. Or... is it just me? Who's there? What? Vati! How did you get in here? Uh, what are you doing? Ah ha 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 ha
It looks like you're all here. Very well. The King of Hyrule has words for you. You all know of the power that Bikori gave to mankind, do you not? The golden light force of limitless magical power. I want it. It is somewhere here in Hyrule. Go now and bring me this power. Waste no time. Go forth at once and bring me the light force. Fling anyone who refuses into the dungeon. Him and his family too. I will tolerate no disobedience. Now, search high and low throughout the lands of Hyrule. Hmm. Maybe it's just the wind. But I hope nothing bad has happened. Anyway, we need to look for the next element. The map says it should be around here somewhere. Very, very eerie indeed. It seems that Vati has gained some evil influence over the King of Hyrule. Now that that has happened, it will open up a lot more stuff around the world, namely Kinstone Fusions. But unfortunately, we are not going to be covering that this video. As you can see, if one of those fox monsters actually manages to hit you, you will spray out rupees. There are other monsters around like that, so you want to be sure to be careful. Wow, 20 rupees, very nice. Take out this crow right here, or not. Push this rock, and nicely enough, it is a shortcut to South Hyrule Field, so make sure to open that up as soon as you can. Now we take out that crow. And take his money, very nice. So this here is the Western Wood, an area of Hyrule that we haven't actually been to yet. And you can see down there, that is actually the Poet's House. Can't access it quite yet, but we're going to want to do that as soon as possible. Heading down through this way, I believe it's this way, I hope I'm not wrong about this. I am wrong about this, darn it. This is something we actually can't do until later. Want to head up through here, and eventually we are going to be coming to a new area, which is very important as it leads to the next element. Castor Wilds. Danger, don't forget your Pegasus boots. But we do not yet possess Pegasus boots. What does that mean for us? Well, we are going to see momentarily, because coming right up through here is... Castor Wilds. So, this must be Castor Wilds. It's a nasty, dank place filled with swampland and mire. But we know there's an element waiting for us somewhere in here, so... In we go! Come on, Link! Into the muck with us! Yeah, let's do it! Come on, we can make it! Let's do this! Come on! I don't think we can walk fast enough to cross this swamp. We're going to have to find some way to get across safely. Some way indeed. We are going to need a pair of Pegasus boots. Where can we get a pair of Pegasus boots? Well, I'm going to meet you over in Hyrule Town and I'm going to show you. Entering into Hyrule Town here, you will see there are now soldiers patrolling the land. So the Light Force is some kind of treasure that can grant any wish. The king must be looking for it so that he can ensure peace in Hyrule. I'm not so sure about that. But anyway, if you come over here, you see that this pad that we managed to clean off earlier, there is this guy. This is Beetle. Why, hello there. Thanks for coming by. I sell all kinds of Pico Light. I just put it in your bottle, and good stuff happens when you drink it. Yes, you can buy varieties of Pico Light here. Some will allow you to find more rupees when you cut grass, and some of them will actually allow you to find kinstone pieces. You're going to want to make sure that you grab some of that whenever you need kinstone pieces from now on. But anyway... Right over here, we have the shoe shop. Head on inside, and we have a very drowsy worker right here. As soon as you walk in, kaplunk, unconscious on his desk. How unreliable. But anyway, we want to come over here and shrink ourselves down and head right on up this way, and surprise, surprise, straight out of the shoe worker and the elf story, we have a shoe worker and the minish story. Hey, hey, you're Link, right? You're the one who brought the sword to Master Malari. You're on a quest to help the princess, aren't you? I wish I could go on a quest, but then who would make Rem's shoes for him? Oh ho! You need Pegasus boots? Why, you're just in time! We made a pair just now while Rem was sleeping, but only Rem can put the finishing touches on them. Ha <laughs> ha! That sleepyhead Rem is nearly impossible to wake up. If you want to wake him, you'll need to get an item from Syrup's Hut. It's a little bit of a trick, but we'll mark it on your map for you. Alrighty, so now that we have Syrup's Hut marked out on our map, we need to go find something that can wake up Rem, so we're definitely going to want to do that. 
This is the chain of events we needed to activate before we could get into Lon Lon Ranch. So we're going to be covering basically everything that I wasn't able to cover in Episode 8 right up here. So I'm going to head out to Lon Lon Ranch and I'll meet you guys right over there. Right over here at Lon Lon Ranch we have this guy. I lost my key and I can't get inside and the spare key is inside the house. What a pain. And I was thinking of going into town to sell Lon Lon milk. It seems that Malin and Talon are unable to get into Lon Lon Ranch because they have lost their key. So what you want to do is come over here and shrink down and you will see that there is a little hole that a Minish can fit through. So let's head right on in here. And we got a couple of beds and some pottery. And what do we do in Zelda? We break pottery. And right here we have the Lon Lon Ranch key. Now you can open the ranch door. I'm going to break the rest of these pots just to see if I can get anything else. Ooh, a red rupee. That's very nice. Now that we've snuck in here and snatched the spare key, we can head right on back outside, return to our normal size, and see if we can't help out this poor couple. Oh, our one and only spare key! I don't know how you got this, but I can't thank you enough. Tell me your name, Sonny. Link, that's a great name. If you ever need to go to Lake Hylia, feel free to cut through our house. Thank you very much, Link. Come visit us again. Man, Malin, Talon, Pegasus, Boots, Lake Hylia, Lon Lon Ranch. It's just a big compendium of references to older Zelda titles. So what we can do now is we can head through the building and we are now inside Lon Lon Ranch. What you're probably going to want to do is head right on in here. And this is the room that we managed to unlock with that fusion with the mayor back in episode 8. Open the chest and the big wallet. This will expand our wallet to the maximum it can possibly hold. It can now hold 999 rupees. And that is the maximum capacity that it's got. Lake Hylia and Syrup the Witch's Hut. Very good. And I am just remembering now that there is actually something I forgot in Hyrule Town, so Apologies for this discontinuity, but I'm going to go grab that because it involves getting an item that's right on our way here, so super sorry, but I'm going to have to go grab that real quick. Shrinking down in the cafe and heading right across to the store and jumping straight down here, you will see that there is now an empty, not empty, but there is a bottle over on the desk right here. This is important for something that we can do right now in Lake Hylia. Come over here and pick it up. I'm sorry, my good lad, but that is not for sale. That bottle contains food for my dear little dog, Fifi. What? You just want the bottle? That's highly unusual. Well, fine. If you feed Fifi, then I guess you can have the bottle. How does that sound? We are going to do this. Excellent, excellent. He's at my home right now. Thank you so much. You got a bottle of dog food. Now head out on your errand. Allow me to mark the location of my home here on your map. And his home is actually right over there in, you guessed it, Lake Hylia. I believe there should be a doggy dish for my dog back in my house. Just face the dish and press R to dump the food into little Fifi's bowl. We are going to want to do that. Apologies for forgetting this back when we were in Hyrule Town getting some other items. But now that we have this, we are going to head back to where we just were in Lon Lon Ranch. It might actually be a good thing that I had to come back and grab this because I get to point out that now that we have opened up Lon Lon Ranch, Oh, hello there! I'm selling creamy, nutritious Lon Lon milk for 100 rupees per bottle. Would you like to buy some? I don't think I'm going to buy some, but it looks like Malin is here and she will sell you Lon Lon milk for a pretty hefty price, but I'm pretty sure it refills all your hearts. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it does. I would hope so, since it's so expensive. But anyway, now that I've pointed that out, back into the ranch. Back in the ranch, what we want to do is head right out this way, and here we have... Lake Hylia. Very, very blue. I like it. Nice change of pace. But anyway, we want to head up here because this is actually Stockwell's vacation home. I believe Stockwell is actually a character from The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Okay, I don't think we actually have to equip the bottle of dog food. I think we can just quit out of this, walk up, and press R. You got an empty bottle. Use it to store all sorts of things. Yes, we now have a second empty bottle. There's a total of four in this game, as there are in most Zelda games. There's a place here that we can actually um, transform ourselves into a Minish, but I don't think we actually need to do that yet. I'm not sure if it actually gets us anything. 
But anyway, now that we have done that, we can head back around here. As you can see, we have a bit of a one-way street right here. We're going to have to come at it from the south. You'll also notice that another one of those strange pads up there is already revealed. So that could be very important, and in fact, it will be in the relatively near future, so keep it in mind. Anyway, we want to head right on up here. And I believe there will be a way to get us up there? Yes. We can also push this rock. Gives us a shortcut into the ranch. Use our cane of Pecky, sprawling right up here. And I believe there is a red kinstone piece down this hole right here. Might as well grab it. I don't think we, we are going to be uh, coming back over here for any other reason anytime soon. So I think we'll just head right on over and get it. That, kin that uh, not kinstone piece, that piece of heart down there. We unfortunately can't get that yet. But we're going to be able to get it soon. Red kinstone piece. This could be very helpful to us in the future. So it's probably a good idea if you go and pick it up. Anyway, head right on back to the portal here. And return to normal size. And we can now use Ezlo's cool parachuting trick even in other areas aside from Mount Cornell. We're definitely going to want to do that because this is the key to getting to Syrup's Hut. We want to parachute right over here. And it might not look like you can make it, but you actually can. You want to come all the way down here across this lake and plop yourself on the ground and head over this way. This will access an alternate area of Lake Hylia back here. I believe this takes us, yes, it also takes us to Long Long Ranch. Freeze up another little bit of a shortcut right there in case you need it. And if we head right on down here, we are now in the Minish Woods. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yes, there is actually, ow, a golden Octorok right here. Watch this thing. This thing fires like a machine gun, so you want to be incredibly careful fighting it, especially if it has low health as me. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to move too terribly fast. So what you want to do is take it out, and once it finally falls in battle, 100 rupees free of charge. Well, not necessarily free of charge, it's a pretty brutal fight. And there's also this chest right here that we unveiled from the Kinstone Fusion last episode. Grab that, because it's a blue Kinstone piece, and here we have that piece of heart from our very first visit to the Minish Woods. You're definitely going to want to grab this because it will refill your life energy. Also, it counts for 100%. Here we have this. Mayor Hagen's Lakeside Cabin, all digging absolutely prohibited. Hmm, interesting. As you can see, this is not a bombable wall. We're going to have to have a new item before we can deal with this, so that should be a bit interesting. But anyway, right up here, we have... Syrup the Witch's Hut. Let's head inside. I love this music. Ah, welcome. Care for some of Granny's homemade blue potion? One sip and you're full of energy. Please, look around. You can swipe your bottle in here to grab some potion if you want, but we actually want this. Ah, yes, a fine choice, my dear. That's a limited time article. One whiff and you're wide awake. That is why it is called a wake-up mushroom. Would you like to buy it for 60 rupees? Little bit steep, but we're definitely going to want to buy this. You got a wake-up mushroom. Its nasty stench chases away the sleepies. Very good. Now that we have the wake-up mushroom, <laughs> just face the sleepy snoozer and press R. That'll pop his eyes right open. Pop. That is going to be very useful for us in the immediate future. So without further ado, let's head right on back to Hyrule Town and wake up Rem. Alrighty, we are back in town. Let's head right on into the shoe store. If I recall correctly, and I guarantee that I do, my boy, I think Syrup said to stand in front of a sleeping person and press R. Breaking the fourth wall, everyone's doing it. Anyway, head right up here, press R. What? What is that terrifyingly bad smell? A wake-up mushroom? I should have guessed. So you woke me up? Thanks. I just remembered I have something urgent to do. Huh? What now? There are more new shoes. You probably won't believe this, but I have a strange habit of making shoes in my sleep. So you must have come here because you want some of my shoes, right? Tell you what, because you were nice enough to wake me, you can have them. Hold on a sec, though. I just want to finish this one last bit. And there we go. Here, take these. These are my special Pegasus boots. 
They're so light you'll feel like you're practically walking on air. You got the Pegasus boots. Hold the button to run faster than the wind. Oh, I need to hurry up and get working on that special order. The king asked me to make some shoes for Princess Zelda, you see. Thanks for waking me up. Come back if I can ever help you with shoe problems. Seems this guy hasn't really caught up on the uh, news of the day in regards to Princess Zelda. But anyway, come right on over here and we can equip the Pegasus boots. Let's head right on out here and you press and hold the button and you will definitely go flying. Very nice. Boom! Go crashing into walls like nobody's business. Might as well also demonstrate the boomerang while we're here before we end things off since we did get it in this episode. Head on right down here to South Hyrule Field, for example. And basically, you can chuck the boomerang in a straight line, and it will stun the enemy. And it will not hurt you if you touch it, and you're basically free to just tear away at it with your sword. But anyway, I think now that we have the Pegasus boots and we cleared up some unfinished business from a few episodes ago, I think we're going to end things off here. So, next time on The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, we're not going to be heading back to Castor Wilds quite yet. Now that we've seen Vati attack the king and we have the Pegasus boots, there are many more Kinstone fusions and many more pieces of heart that we are going to be grabbing now that we have the means to do so. So I will see you guys next time!